the governor loves Kentucky, and he loves Kentuckians, like Max mentioned earlier. And it's a pleasure to have him here for lunch today and to hear some words that he has to share with us. So, Governor Bashir, if you'd join me. Thank you very much. First of all, it's hard to compete with Sonny's Barbecue. You all did a great job. Let's give them a round of applause. The food was wonderful. It's great to be here in Nicholasville and Jessamine County. You all have an exciting place to live, to work, to play. You've got a lot of exciting economic activities going on, a lot of great companies. Uh, we are joined by Deidre Lines of Alltech, which is a, a wonderful Kentucky company based here in Jessamine County. Hood, thank you on behalf of the Commonwealth and for all of the investment AT&T makes in the state, and we're looking forward to even more of that uh, in the future. And thanks to every one of you that are a part of this chamber. I can't tell you how important it is for you to be a part of an organization like this that is active, not only in the community, but is active in terms of what goes on in Frankfurt. We need more input from folks like you in order to be able to move this state forward. So thank you very much for being a part of all of this. You know, it's a great day to be in Nicholasville and Jessamine County for another reason. We made an announcement this morning that after, I think, about two decades of talk, we're actually going to build the new East Nicholasville Bypass. And we're not talking about planning. We're talking about construction. This fall, we are going to put out for bid the first section of the East Nicholasville bypass and we're going to have the bulldozer, bulldozers moving shortly thereafter. I find it interesting that we're standing here in R.J. Corman's headquarters because Rick Corman was an action fellow. Those of you who know him know that because when he decided he needed to do something, you'd better just hang on, because he was going to move fast. Well, we're finally going to get those bulldozers moving uh, and move fast and get this first section started. When that whole project is finished, that's going to be a $123 million four-lane highway that will finally connect all the way around Nicholasville. As I mentioned this morning, I knew for sure I was going to make that announcement when I drove over on Nicholasville Road. <laughs> the bad news for your community is you've got terrible traffic. The good news for your community is you've got terrible traffic. Because what that does tell you is the huge amount of economic activity that you have going on here. And I'll tell you, most communities would give an arm and a leg to have the kind of activity going on that you have. But as we all know, we have to keep up with the infrastructure part of that in order to make that a positive experience rather than a negative experience. And so I think this bypass obviously will help in that regard. I want to briefly talk about this last legislative session. It was my last legislative session. I know Rocky Adkins will be glad to know I'm not calling a special session that I know of this summer or this fall. He just applauded that. <laughs> but I want to tell you in many ways, and you know, we've gone through, I've had, I've had eight regular sessions in my eight years. We've had a number of special sessions. But in many ways, this last session was one of the most productive sessions in my memory. 
a lot of complex issues that we had been dealing with for years finally came to fruition and finally passed and have become law. We came up with a comprehensive and aggressive approach to the heroin crisis that our state is experiencing. It took a lot of work and a lot of bipartisan effort to finally make that happen, but we made it happen. And now we're going to come down not only hard on the drug traffickers, but we're also going to invest in treatment. Because I think most of us know that in these days and times, if you don't have a family member or a friend or a neighbor who's been touched by the drug epidemic, consider yourself very fortunate because most of us do. And we know that most of these folks that are addicted to these drugs are good folks. They are folks that need help. And we need to step out and invest in that help. Because if we can even be successful 10 or 15 or 20 percent of the time in getting people off of those drugs and back into being productive members of society, Folks, that investment will pay off for years to come. We also fought a hard battle and stabilized our road fund. The gasoline tax, as you know, funds most of our road fund. And with the precipitous drop in the price of oil, uh, all those revenues were heading south at uh, freight train speed. And the legislature stepped up with me and, and created a floor so that we will have a road fund with which to build an East Nicholasville bypass. After years of hard work, we passed a law to protect women through tougher dater, dating violence laws. We created a law that will protect our children more with enhanced booster seat protection. We created a rating system for our early childhood centers so that parents can look at a center before they enroll their child and see how it rates and see what the good parts are and the bad parts are and can make intelligent choices about where to put their kids. We passed incentives to attract filming of movies and commercials and documentaries creating more employment in our state. One thing that made all of that happen was a bipartisanship effort on behalf of both Republicans and Democrats in this state. And if there's one thing I'm most proud of in the eight years I've been governor is the fact that we have been able, for the most part, to get all of our office holders after elections to remember that we're Kentuckians first and Democrats and Republicans second. And the more we can do that, the more we get done. I don't have to prove that to you. All I do is ask you to look at Washington, D.C., where nothing gets done because they don't seem to be able to do that. Both sides simply yell at each other and then go out and raise more money so that they can get reelected and yell at each other some more. Well, that's not the way we do business here in the Commonwealth. And because we're able to come together, we have been able to move this state along. Let me tell you and give you kind of a snapshot of what has happened over this eight years. When I came into office at the end of 2007, within a couple of weeks, we were hit square in the face with a historic recession. And I don't have to tell you much about that. You went through it just like I did. And just as families had to sit around for about a two-year period, sit around the kitchen table at night and try to figure out what bills to pay first and how we're going to keep the kids in school and how we're going to get the car repaired and setting those kind of priorities of where to spend your money, state government had to do the same thing. And over the course of that two to three years, we cut about $1.6 billion out of our spending in state government. But we did it, I think, the smart way. A lot of states, and everybody had to do the same thing, a lot of states took what I call the meat axe approach. If they needed 
a total of 5% of their budget to be cut, they just cut everything across the board, 5%. We didn't do that. We did it the hard way. We made choices. And folks, when you make choices, it's a lot harder. Because everything we fund in state government is important to somebody and does good in some way. But I felt, and the legislature agreed with me, that there were some things that state government does that is more important than other things. And the most important thing that we do is educate our children. And so we made that the top priority. And we didn't cut our K through 12 education funding. We had to cut a lot of other things, but we left that intact. We left public safety intact because there isn't any more basic duty of a government than to make sure that your people feel safe in their homes and on the streets. But because we approached it in that way, as our economy has started to come back, and now it is coming back with a vengeance, we were poised, unlike a lot of states, to build on that foundation that we kept together in education. And this economy, folks, is now taking off. You don't have to take my word for it. You know, Wes Jessman's got that beautiful trophy back there. And guys, congratulations for winning the state championship. Let's give them a round of applause. Well, Kentucky's got a trophy just like that that we won last year in 2014. It's called the Governor's Cup. Now, I didn't give it to ourselves. There is a nationally recognized publication called Site Selection Magazine out of Atlanta. And every year, it rates every state on job creation and economic development in their state. And then they rank the states according to that development. In 2014, Kentucky was the top state in the nation in job creation and economic development per capita. Think about that a minute. Think about who we compete with around this country. And for Kentucky to be where we are today is an amazing situation for us to find ourselves in. You know, our unemployment rate, which at the depths of our recession reached 10.7%. Last month, 5.1%. And it continues to drop every month. Last year, by winning that award, we won it because we had 350 economic development projects all over this state, totaling about $3.7 billion in new business investment. Folks, that was the most business investment in a single year that Kentucky has had since we started keeping those figures about 30 years ago. Our exports in 2014 set a record. $27.5 billion in Kentucky exports. Now that's fantastic, but I want you to understand that that is the fourth year in a row that we've set a record. We bettered ourselves each of the last four years, and the first three months of this year in 2015, we're 11% ahead of the record year that we just came off of in 2014. So, We've got every reason to be proud of where we are. But part of how we're going to stay where we are is by investing in the most important asset that we can have, and it's not physical infrastructure, it's human infrastructure. We have to have the workforce that companies are just going to fall all over themselves to get to Kentucky to hire. I've been all over this country and this world the last eight years to bring jobs to this state. I've talked to uh, dozens and dozens of CEOs around the world, and they all tell me the same thing. They say, Governor, yes, these roads are great, they're important, we need these tax incentives, that's important, got good utilities, good communication network, but the most important thing we got to have, Governor, is a qualified, skilled, trained, healthy, drug-free workforce. You give us that workforce, Governor, and we'll be a success and we'll make Kentucky a success. Now, we've got a, a good workforce. 
Don't get me wrong, but it can be much better. And we've got to continue to invest to make it much better. How do we do that? We start at the time that child is born, quite honestly. Early childhood education and development is the best investment that we can continue to make in the Commonwealth. And during this last budget cycle, the first time we had any money to spend after this recession, we have money in there to put another 5,500 kids into preschool. So that's a step in the right direction, but we've got to continue to develop these children from the time they're born until age five, because 80% of their brain development occurs during that period of time. And if we can get all of our children, by the time they hit kindergarten, to be ready to hit the ground running, you talk about an amazing workforce we're gonna end up with on the other end. And in between, we won't be spending nearly as much money on our jails, nearly as much money on drug treatment, nearly as much money on dropouts as we do right now. The second thing we got to do, of course, is continue to improve our K through 12 and our higher education system. We've taken great strides in that. I, every day I give thanks for the First Lady, not only because she lets me be married to her, and that's a great thing in and of itself, but because she has demonstrated such leadership in this state in so many ways, but education is one of the main ones. She decided, and I agreed with her, that we needed to raise our dropout age. It had been 16 years old since 1920. It was time to keep our kids in school and make sure that they got a meaningful diploma so that they could be career or college ready. We fought for six years to do that. Every year when the House always said yes, the Senate would say no, and she'd look them in the eye and say, I'll be back. And she was back every year and finally wore them down, and we passed it, and today we have that better dropout age. So education is a key here. And the other key thing here is a healthy drug-free workforce. As you know, we've been clamping uh, uh, clamping down on prescription drug abuse, running our pill mills out of the state, all of the things you got to do in the drug area to fight that scourge, that epidemic. And we're also, for the first time, able to provide affordable, accessible health care to every single Kentuckian. And I know that issue gets people all worked up, you know, from a political standpoint, and quite honestly to me it's not a political issue. I don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican, if you've got a healthier Kentucky, you're going to have a better Kentucky. You know, how, how can anybody really be against having every one of our people healthier? Because if they're healthier, guess what? We're going to attract more businesses here. We're going to have more jobs created here. And so we've been working very hard to do just that. The work's not done. I'm not here to spike the football in the end zone or to cut the nets down and go home. But we've got a tremendous amount of momentum going in this state, and we've got to build on that. And if we just keep building and doing these kinds of things over the next 8, 10, 12, 14 years, you're going to see an entirely different Kentucky than what you see today. And what I see today, I like. But you're going to like it even better, because that's the way that a state ultimately improves itself is to continue to build on the good things that are going on. So once again, thank you all for having me here. We appreciate you. Thanks to R.J. Corman, Company, Craig, all of you guys that are such great corporate citizens here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Let's keep moving, and let's keep moving in the right direction. Thank you.